Hello class. This is a continuation of a series of lessons on stoichiometry. On the last lesson, we talked about average atomic masses and Avogadro's number and the mole. And now we're going to talk about molar masses. Uh, molar mass, which is abbreviated as MM sometimes, uh, is the sum of all the atomic masses in a given chemical formula. Typically, it has units of grams per mole. On the periodic table, you're used to looking at average atomic masses and those being in units of atomic mass units, or AMU. Uh, but based off of our definition for molar mass, um, that is essentially synonymous with grams per mole. So you can use the average atomic masses on the periodic table to get your units of grams per mole. Um, it's also equal to the mass in grams of 6.02 particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance, which is why we're able to use AMU and grams per mole interchangeably. Uh, some other related terms that you may see a lot are molecular weight or formula weight, uh, also the term formula unit. Uh, formula unit and formula weight uh, imply ionic bonding. Uh, they don't use those terms a ton these days, but sometimes you see them. Um, molecular weight would imply uh, covalent bonding. Uh, but for the purposes of what we're doing, we're just going to refer to masses as molar masses just to keep things simple. Uh, as a result of using a molar mass, we know that that unit is grams per mole or grams per one mole. So we can set up two conversion factors. So for instance, aluminum has a molar mass of 26.98 grams per mole. So you can set up a conversion factor of one mole of aluminum over 26.98 grams of aluminum or 26.98 grams of aluminum over one mole. This first problem we're gonna look at here uh, is going to allow us to calculate the number of moles and the number of atoms given a 10 gram sample of aluminum. So. Uh, really, we can just set up one um, series of dimensional analysis conversion factors, and we'll be able to convert from grams to mole, and then to mole uh, from mole to particles. So let's start with our 10.0 grams of aluminum. If we want grams to cancel, we want grams on the bottom. So we're going to put in our molar mass here, 26.98 grams of aluminum. And then we are left in moles of aluminum on top. So that first conversion factor will get us our moles of aluminum. Um, and then the second one will get the number of atoms. So if we check our units, uh, Grams of aluminum will cancel out here and we'll be left in moles of aluminum up top for that first conversion factor. Since we're now left in moles of aluminum, I need moles of aluminum on the bottom. Oops, make sure I'm consistent with my colors here. So one mole of aluminum on the bottom and I wanna find number of atoms for my final answer. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum on top. Now, if I check my units, moles of aluminum on top of my first conversion factor and moles of aluminum on the bottom of my second conversion factor allows both of those to cancel. And my final answer will be in units of atoms of aluminum. So let's set this up in the calculator. 10.0 uh, grams is three sig figs, so my final answer should be in three significant figures. So times the top one, divided by 26.98, close parentheses. That's my first conversion factor. I did put that in parentheses just to keep myself sane. And then times the second, we're going to multiply times the top, um, which we actually need our um, parentheses for because it's a number in scientific notation. So I open parentheses once for the entire fraction, and then I open parentheses a second time for 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, close parentheses once for 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, divided by one mole on the bottom, close parentheses a second time to close the whole uh, fraction. And I get an answer of 2.231 times 10 to the 23rd, 
but I want to pay attention to my sig figs, 2.23 is sufficient. That E is my exponent, remember that, times 10 to the 23rd atoms of Al. Now again, if you're not comfortable with the fraction setup, um, you can divide by the molar mass for the first part, and then multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Just make sure that's in parentheses, and you'll get the same answer of 2.231 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. Now, similar idea going into this next problem. We're starting with atoms this time, and we want to find moles and mass of our sample. Um, and I guess I should go back for a second, because this question before did ask for both moles and for atoms. So the number of moles uh, is 0 0.3706 and then a bunch of other stuff. Uh, now, I don't need to report the moles in the correct number of sig figs, uh, because I want to save sig figs until the very end of the problem. So I'm just going to cut it off there for on paper, but do know that the 449222 part is still significant in the middle of the calculation. You want to do your rounding at the end of the calculation. Um, so that's how many moles of aluminum we had. And then for our final answer, we had 2.23 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay. Uh, so sorry, I uh, my bad. I know this problem did ask for moles and for number of atoms. So you should report both of them if it asks for both of them. Uh, this next one, however, they only ask for, um, oh no, it does ask for moles and for mass. So we can do the same setup. 5.00 times 10 to the 20th atoms. Now, be careful with cobalt. Cobalt is capital C, lowercase o, which is different from capital C, capital O. Capital C, capital O is carbon monoxide, uh, and so your masses are going to be different at the end. All right, if we're starting in atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd has to be on the bottom, so that way my atoms cancel out, and my one mole of cobalt on top, and then if I have one mole of cobalt on top, one mole of cobalt is on the bottom, and then the grams of cobalt will need to be on top. I think cobalt, if I remember, is around 58 grams. 58.933 grams. So I can put that on my top fraction here, 58.93. And then I can set that up in my calculator. So again, with the calculator, anytime you have a number in scientific notation, open parentheses, and then close parentheses after the times 10 to the exponent. Um, in the last problem, I multiplied by fractions. This time, I'm just going to do the division because, again, it works both ways. You just have to be careful of which method you're using. And notice I did open parentheses for 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd again. And so when I divide by that, I get a very small amount of moles, 8.305 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of cobalt. But then I will multiply this by 58.93, uh, multiplying by the top my molar mass. And with three significant figures, my final answer ends up being 0 0.0489 grams of cobalt as my final answer. I can go back and check my units. Atoms of CO have canceled, moles of CO have canceled, and therefore I am in grams. All right, go ahead and try to work through set three. There's a couple of problems here going from grams all the way to atoms and atoms all the way to grams. All right, welcome back. We're gonna talk molar masses for compounds. As we mentioned earlier, molar masses essentially are just adding up the masses from the periodic table, uh, but we do need to talk about subscripts. Um, before, in the last couple of problems, we were looking at single elements, so we didn't need to add up the masses. We just pulled that masses from the periodic table. Um, but with these problems, we need to pay attention to how many atoms there are. 
if there are no numbers listed next to the atom on the right, um, the small numbers are referred to as subscripts. So BASO4 tells us we have one BA since there's no number listed. We have one S since there's no number listed and four oxygens because we have a small subscript of four. So we need our masses of each of those. So on the periodic table, barium is 137.33. So I've got, oop, I don't want to use red, I'm sorry. I got 137.33 grams per mole of barium. Technically, I need to multiply this by one because there's one barium in there, but that just keeps it the same. Uh, for sulfur, I have 32.07 grams per mole of sulfur. Again, times one because there's one of them. Plus 16.0 grams per mole for oxygen. This one we have to multiply by four because there's four of them. When we add all of those together, <clears throat> we'll get our final mass. So 137.33 plus 32.07 plus 16 times four. And I get a final mass of 233.4. Or always go to two decimal places. They didn't give us a second decimal place, so we know it's a zero. So 233.40 grams per mole is the molar mass for barium sulfate, BASO4. Now, when you're calculating molar masses, I'll be honest, this is mostly number crunching in the calculator. I don't need to see your work for figuring out a molar mass. You're going to calculate so many molar masses by the end of this course. Um, just do it and then just plug it into where you need it. Most often you'll have to figure out a molar mass before you do a gram and mole conversion. Uh, so you'll need to figure out molar masses then. Just plug it in, set up your dimensional analysis. Uh, I don't need to see the fact that you multiplied your oxygen by four, okay? Uh, I'm just showing you the work now so you know how to figure it out and then later you can adapt, okay? Uh, the next one is interesting because we've got a polyatomic ion, uh, ammonium, NH4, and then there's a 2 on the outside. Uh, just like in math, when there are parentheses and numbers on the outside of those parentheses, they distribute uh, times what's on the inside. Um, so for nitrogen, nitrogen's mass is 14.01 grams per mole for nitrogen, but there are two of them because there's one on the inside of parentheses and this 2 on the outside tells us there's two of them. For hydrogen, we have 1.01 grams per mole. And there's four on the inside times two on the outside. Four times two is eight. So this one we're actually multiplying by eight. We've got 12.01 grams for carbon, technically times one because there's one carbon. And then uh, we've got to add 16 grams per mole for oxygen times three because there's three of them. So we can go through in our calculator here and 14.01 times two, close parentheses, 1.01 times eight, close parentheses, plus 12.01 plus 16 times three. All right. And with this, we get a mass of, oops, That was weird. Uh, with this, we get a mass of 96.11 grams per mole for ammonium carbonate, NH42CO3. It is important that you write the formula after a molar mass. Um, that way, you're clearly labeling all parts of your unit. Go ahead and get some practice calculating molar masses in the U Try It set number four. All right, welcome back. Uh, this time we're going to work on gram and mole conversions. We have spent some time uh, looking at molar masses, so now we're going to work in gram and mole conversions just like we did with our atoms and molecules and um, grams to molecules steps. So we're just going to do that first part here. Uh, so I have four significant figures in my starting amount here, 7.030 grams of iron 
sulfate. Okay, and specifically iron 3 sulfate. If I want to convert this to moles, my desired unit is on top. One mole of Fe2. Oh, sorry, my pen is wonking out a little bit. Um, one mole of Fe2 SO43, and then we're going to have grams of Fe2 SO43 on the bottom. Now for my molar masses, iron, I believe, is 55.85. Let's double check that. 55.845, but 85 is fine. 54.85 times 2 for iron. Plus my sulfate is 32.07 for sulfur. There's one on the inside of the parentheses, three on the outside, so we multiply sulfur by three. And then 16 for oxygen is our mass for oxygen. There's four on the inside times three on the outside. Four times three is 12. There are 12 oxygens here, that's a lot. But when we plug all of that in, we get, oops, I keep forgetting to switch back to the pen feature. We get 399.91 grams of iron sulfate. That's my molar mass, that goes on the bottom. By doing this, I see that my grams cancel and I'll be left in moles. So. 7 point, oops, let's try that again. All right, 7.030 uh, times 1 over 399.91, close parentheses, and we get our answer in moles. Or the other way you could have done it is just by dividing by that molar mass of 399.91. You'll see you get the same answer here. Now we need four significant figures. So that zero is not significant. So we have an unsignificant zero, 0, 0 0.0, and they go one, seven, five. That seven is significant, but the number past it is an eight. So it rounds up to eight. So we get 0 0.0. 1758 moles, and that would be four significant figures for our Fe2SO43. Okay. All right. If we're going the opposite direction, number of grams, same deal uh, 0 0.0804 moles of calcium hydroxide. All right. This time I want moles on the bottom. And I'll figure out my molar masses. So uh, calcium is 40.08. There's only one of them, so I don't need to multiply it by anything. Oxygen, I have to multiply by two because there's one on the inside, two on the outside. Same with hydrogen, one on the inside, two on the outside. And I get 74.10 as my molar mass here. Again, just put in two decimal places for your molar masses for your sanity. All right. Moles cancel. And then when I get my final answer, this one only has three significant figures. So 0, 0 0.0804 times 74.1. And I get 5.957, that will round up to a six. So I get 5.95, or sorry, 5.96 grams of calcium hydroxide for my final answer. And that's in three sig figs. Okay. Go ahead and do the you try it set number five. And let me check my time here. That is going to be the end for this lesson. We'll pick up um, with elements that exist as molecules and talk about percent composition.